Hello and welcome to the Tom and Joe show. I'm Joe. I'm Tom. We're back. And we're back <laughs> after a long time. Um, and uh, I, I told you, Tama, I told you, Wu-Tang ain't nothing to fuck with. We, we, are, cha- we are at the end of the episode. We, we are changing the Wu-Tang episode because, uh, as previously mentioned, we are two white guys and we feel that probably we're going to knock it back a little bit to uh, talk about uh, it with somebody who knows what they're talking about and hip-hop and we will eventually get round to talking about the Wu-Tang yeah. clan um, again. When, once you get to their film career, it starts to be a little much. <laughs> yeah, and it might be too much to keep in our head. So yeah, we're moving up. Uh, so we're moving to my anime choice. Woo. And Tama, have you heard the good news? I have not heard the good news. What is the good news, Joe? Our the good news is we are doing my favorite anime of all time, Hibane Renmei. Woo. Following and that was supposed to be a religious thing, just because um, <laughs> it is a very weird favorite anime, mm. like. It is not that this is obviously good and everybody loves it. It Mm. seems to select the people who need it, who Mm. find it. And um, every, most everybody I have who has like Hibane Renmei as their favorite anime has a story of why they needed it at the time they watched it. I mean, I have one too. We can get into that. It's really not that fascinating of a story or even that you know i wasn't in that dire of straits <laughs> but it was there um it helped me and it moved on and that's kind of how it works as a uh, series definitely works as, it is as a, a series, series. Put, it, yeah it is a series about about it, it is a series in essence about people helping each other move on quite literally <laughs> yes so, um, where to begin with this? This is our first. We're, we're doubtless gonna cover up, come across him again. Uh, this is our first encounter with Yoshitoshi Abe, uh, who is probably equally, or probably not better known for uh, the character designs for the very, very famous uh, anime serial experiments lane and uh, Technolize. Uh, and the character designs for the Welcome to the NKH or NHK, if I can, my dyslexia. Um, I, I think he did the cover designs. I don't think he did the character designs, but he did the cover yeah. for the novels of Welcome to the mm-hmm. NHK, which I yeah. I have it in on my bookshelf. Yeah. So um, <laughs> he he also did the cover design for All You Need Is Kill, which would eventually be <laughs> yeah. come the Tom Cruise movie Edge of, Edge of Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's a tangential and, link. <laughs> Yay. And he did the character designs and some writing for Nia Under 7 and then uh, rewrite it. Uh, I wanted to rewrite it is kind of his one mm. not good work. I, clearly it's but uh, if you wanted to detach him, he did do some writing for that. Mm. He did character designs. He was very much involved with that. So he, you can't just skirt the blame. Yeah. And. Well, he only did the character designs. He was just work for hire. No, yeah. he worked on that series. So, mm-hmm. but he's um, awesome. he is yeah. he is by far one of my favorite. Oh my God, favorite yes. illustrator. Same, absolutely. It like <laughs> the only reason I was attracted to Serial Experiments Lane is because I looked at the cover designs and they're just the art is so good in yeah. ways that they're extremely detailed and. His character designs tell you so much about a character yeah. um, without saying anything. Mm, absolutely. He and, is... I, I try to work out the best way of, des- of, of describing his art style to a somebody who hasn't seen it before. It's it's at once quite realistic, in particular the way he does, um, obviously, hair and textures. But at the same time, it does sort of heart back to sort of, you know, the core 90s, early 2000s sort of anime look. He has a very distinctive style, and it, it, it very much um, is a, a major selling point of a lot of the series he, he he works on. Yeah, and the thing is, he didn't start until college. Nope. <laughs> um, like, he hated drawing yeah. for a while, and he, his father w- was a Go player, and he was training to become a professional Go player. But... Uh, 
then in college, you mm -hmm. know, all things worked around yeah. and then he got around to this and, mm. and that became his living. Yeah. And then he, you know, mm. he got into Lane and then, mm -hmm. you know, everything just went from there. Yeah. And certainly he's compared to a lot of modern manga artists who do tend to work. Uh, obviously still on pen and mm -hmm. paper he does obviously use digital stuff alongside the uh the tokyo ghoul manga wow. car he, he is a huge mac mm. addict <laughs> like a lot of his stuff is drawn is literally with his finger he doesn't even use like pen yeah. styluses or whatever mm -hmm. you just so... look at you know what he he <laughs> has a lot of youtube videos when he, yeah. he when he does hard and it's just like holy shit. how do you make it that damn effortless yeah uh, like it looks like you did nothing. <laughs> yeah. And boom, it's there. He certainly collaborates a lot of the time with another person we will uh, come on to uh, talk about, doubtless, when we talk about uh, the other anime they've collaborated on, which is uh, Chiaki uh, J. Konaka, who... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who has uh, come upon recently by uh, making a play version of a new Digimon episode. Oh, he God. was uh, the Digimon Tamers, mm. I believe. The, the, the weird uh, third. The... the show, the show yeah. writer and yeah. all that fun <laughs> stuff. But he wrote a new episode w where the villain was cancel culture. Uh, and it so, went about as well as you could expect if had the internet yeah, went, and then, what are you doing? Then you find out he's a 9-11 truther. And the thing oh, about Chiaki J. Kanaka is he... It was massively into conspiracy theories, and mm. he took too much from his own supply, and he yeah. just fell down that rabbit hole. Yeah, which so that, but that's another story for another day. For sure. What we're talking, what we're talking about here is more personal to Abe because yeah. Abe wrote the screenplay himself. Mm. It came comes from his doujinshi's, which um, doujinshi's are fan works. Mm. Uh, they are. You know, pri they are uh, the best way to describe it is either they're usually fan works of something that already exists, Existing, or yeah. they're independent comics. Yeah, they're, um, they're not. They are best known on the internet for being a lot of porn. Yeah, and there certainly is that, but this <laughs> isn't that. Um, yeah, this was just him independently of everybody else. He did a bunch of doodles and uh, yeah, you know, random thoughts, and then he he made the. The first doujinshi he made, uh, just these angel-like beings in modern times and what their problems would be. Like one of them has a door closed on their halo, and they're like outside of the uh, the train car because their halo is attached to them, and you know other stuff, yeah. such stuff in in modern times. And they had weird uh, triangular ears. And then eventually Abe separated the triangular ears part, and then he made Nia Under Seven, which is about uh, aliens who go to Japan and they follow a caste system. And it's a far more comedy based series. And then he made this, which is ext far more serious. Mm. Um, and um, I do have a In America interview with Abe that kind of explains that. This was based on a lot of exper personal experiences he was going for, but he tried very hard not to put his personal experience mm. to say what the ex personal experiences were. Yeah. Which... In, um, it's um, to get his mindset. Uh, let I'm just gonna go to straight from the interview. Go which for is it, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> saying whenever I talked with American people, I feel that they, compared with Japanese people, cannot leave things ambiguous. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, of course. For example, many questions in this interview ask for clear answers to ambiguous parts of the anime. Hibane Renme is, as the title suggests, high means ash gray in terms of color, a story with various things in gray. That is, a story with many ambiguous factors. It is not a story to find answers but one to wonder about the answers in regards to things whose answers is not clearly shown in the story think for yourself and apply your own answers to it this will mm. surely make this story very special for you and in that way that is what makes uh the story special it's because you like i said it selects people people who are in need and who need it to 
move on or, you know, get to wherever. So being able to put your own experience into this is uh, one of the foundations of what makes it special and mm -hmm. why it works for mm -hmm. the people it works for. Um, and uh, yeah. I... We're, we're 10 minutes into this. I should probably explain what it's about. Yeah. Although I have explained <laughs> the plot of this on so many of my favorite anime lists of all time and stuff like that. Um, so, Hibane Renmei is about this uh, girl named Raka who wakes up in the sky and uh, she is falling slowly and softly. Like, uh, in, the, in the manga, I think it's it's like she's feeling like a pencil as mm. she falls from the sky. And um, eventually she's like, where am I? What am I? And then there's this crow that is trying to keep her from falling. And she just says, you can't, but thank you. And then eventually she realizes, oh, I'm in the sky and I'm falling. And then it there's just this beautiful key animation where it just swoops out from from her face mm. and then and like widens out and then there's the village mm. and then um it cuts to this village um it's called either jury or glee depending mm. on what you are doing i think that was like it's very odd because if you look at the art book it says like jury or mm-hmm I can't, oh, I don't have the art book on me. I no. should, but um, the town has two different names. Yeah. I think it might have been a demand from the Japanese. I don't know, but yeah. there is, or it is clearly has another name in English on the Japanese text, and mm. in the English translation, there's some stuff. Yeah. But um, tends to anyway, be subtitled as Julie, as Julie in, in obviously the 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 sub and the dub band. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so it cuts to this village and there's this place called old home, which is like an old dormitory for, uh, something, whatever. Uh, but this is where the Hibernate live. And, um, Reki, the other main character in the series is walking, just taking art supplies up. And then she hears a sound and then she opens the door to the, to a seemingly abandoned room. And there's a cocoon popping out. And that's how they, the Hibane hatch out of cocoon and mm. that's uh, Raka's cocoon. And so, you know, they have to keep watch until she hatches and uh, Hibane are angel like beings. Um, Abe overemphasizes that they are not Christian angels. They yeah. are just <laughs> their own beings that come from subconscious uh, from what I can I've read from the research um, when he decided to put the whole script of this series together. Um, he, it was a six and a half hour stream of consciousness. And uh, most of this comes from his subconscious yeah. and some of his answers in the interview I have like right here are um, sometimes even he doesn't know mm. why they are there. They are his, it is comes from a subconscious and Maybe someday his subconscious will connect to his subconscious and give him the reason why yeah. it, it is like this. Yeah. So this is absolutely like from beginning to end a, you can tell this is the vision of one person and one person is driving mm -hmm. how the logic of the world and the logic. Cause there's like, there's like so many things that this series sort of goes and hints at that we, you know, in a perhaps in a, a longer series or in a series where multiple people were involved, you'd have somebody go, oh, but what what is this here? You know, what it lo actually lies beyond the wall? And there's a lot of stuff that the series just goes mm -hmm. uh, not important, carry on. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it it is one of those and ev everybody, mm. like, when you were first watching it, you were like, oh, I think there's something wrong here and we're going to learn what's outside and it's going to be, nope. <laughs> um, it, it's not that kind of series, right. uh, but even it presents itself with that mm. and you can obviously find your own answers and yeah. sometimes that's annoying for a series. Sometimes that isn't Yeah. for this one. It doesn't bother me because it is about, it is about putting yourself into the emotional equation mm. And putting your own story and then making your own experiences. And that is 
reflected in the show itself, which we'll get in in a little bit. I'll just, mm. just need to finish up. So, uh, Raka hatches, um, and she is still visibly human at this point, but they put her in bed. Um, they, she has like pain in her back and that's her wings that are about to like sprout. And it is done in an extremely violent, extremely jarring, um, uh, key animation sequence. Mm -hmm. it, it is, that visceral. was done intentionally, intentionally. It, it is very visceral. And like it, <laughs> anybody I tried to show, I tried to show the show to everybody and everybody just watched the first episode and like, okay, that's fine. That's but enough. They, every, everybody remembers the wings thing oh. because it is, it, it is, it is made to make you cringe away from mm. the screen just because it is her rebirth. It is, mm. this is the line where this, is, it, that separates her old life from her new mm. life. Mm. And you know, that it is a, Harsh, it is just this. This is what it is. Mm. Um, I <laughs> oh gosh. Um, so I guess we need to sort of talk about. Um, let's talk about the, the sort of the talent behind this first. I think if, if we've obviously you know okay. we've, we've thought about the the uh, obviously the concept of the series. So uh, on the soundtrack is Ko Atani, who is. Most famous um, for doing well, quite a lot of stuff actually. But uh... um, I I would say his most famous thing is the Shadows of the Colossus mm. soundtrack. Yeah, and he is also known for a lot other things. Yep. Um, I think uh, a a couple of uh, Adult Swim and Toonami shows mm. that made it. Um, let's see here. Yeah. He did Gundam Wing. Yep. <laughs> and he did, uh, oh, why, it, why did I just suddenly blank on the, the other show he did on Toonami? Outlaw is, Star. <laughs> Outlaw Star. Yes. Yes. Out, out, I think it's just because that show just has such a generic title, <laughs> but Outlaw Star Yo. is, uh, uh yeah. is the, the other big one. Uh, otherwise uh, let's have a look. Uh, He's got he he is a very varied thing. Um, he did the soundtrack for just just a quick uh, summation. Uh, the um classic '90s anime you're under arrest. Um, uh, the multiple Gundam series. Uh, soundtrack to a Zoid series. Um, soundtrack to, uh... Ice Shield 21, which is the Shonen Jump football. Oh, God, Ice yeah. Shield 21, yeah. <laughs> uh, Pumpkin Scissors, if anyone remembers that. Uh, Pretty Boy Samurai Series Hakuoki. Uh, Humanity has declined, and he's also working at the moment on the soundtrack for the Richard III, uh, Pretty Boy anime, Requiem of the Rose King. Uh, he also <laughs> did the soundtrack for all of the Gamera, uh, the, um, Gamera... Uh, Gamera reboot films and um, did the soundtrack for Sengoku Basara 3. <laughs> he has a varied, yeah. very career. This very <laughs> varied and like it, it's especially with Outlaw Star and this, mm. they, they are two wildly <laughs> different series that do uh, very different things yeah. and so does the soundtrack. Like the mm. soundtrack on Outlaw Star is extremely flashy, yeah, extremely <laughs> like upbeat, and this is very folksy, very mm. you know, uh, found instruments. They're very. I don't want to say there are no uh, electric because there no. are some like pulsing electrical ones. Late, I think he had they had. Yeah. Had some late music cues that needed to be done extremely quickly in the yeah. latter half of the series and. Uh, yeah, curiously it, enough, it, it reminds me of. This is going to sound completely nuts. Um, Trent Reznor's stuff for you know that sort of on the Nine Inch Nails album Ghosts, where it is that mixture of oh, yeah, you know yeah, stuff, yeah that sort of very sort of quasi you know ambient stuff. Um, that the variedness though is nothing compared to uh, what director uh, Tomu Kazu uh, Toko. Uh, to 
Tokoro is, is famous for. His other most famous series is Helsing Ultimate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, just... it's like for for the first, for a little bit, um, he, a lot of the people who worked on this mm. were people who were storyboarders and episode directors mm. for various shows. Yeah. And, I mean, there's nobody who was like famous, famous. No. Like when they worked on this, um, mm. Tomokosu Tokoro was mm. did work with uh, was the chief director of Nia Under Seven, mm. and they'd worked together uh, with Abe before, mm. and so that's probably how they knew mm. each other. But then, then he does he the the good part of Helsing Ultimate, let's say before yeah the first Neon went out of business, and they had a, a major budget issues trying to finish the series said major major um the animation what? students the ma is ours the major major issues with the anime <laughs> i'm gonna stop uh. doing that now um otherwise okay. radix who Anna, who the studio behind this um apart from silent mobius yeah this is pretty much their baby the other thing bizarrely enough they are most famous for is uh nazca the series probably most famous for being in the opening to Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> and I've, I've watched Nazca. I don't remember a thing about it. So it being on Malcolm in the Middle is mm. the most memorable thing yeah. about it. It's the, it's, the, it's the anime with the grinning guy that's at the beginning of Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. That is all that series is famous for. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> anyway, that's so, that's the talent behind the camera, for, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, and... Um, uh, Yoshitoshi Abe wrote the entire script. Obviously, if you wrote it in one yeah. clip, um, like, uh, I should no note that uh, I mean, like, some of my fa one of my favorite voice actresses is on uh, hmm. uh, Rio Hirahashi played Raka, and I in the community we are we are just kind of like the people who are like cheering her to make it. Because she also, there's another series she's in called Aria, where she's Alice Carroll, and it's that. Yep. That has nothing to do with uh, Alice in Wonderland, nope. but they just naming the character. But she is like the the youngest uh, who is learning how to be a gondola rider in on Mars, because of course, and she is just like the character who is learning to become a person and. You know, everybody's teaching her, and it's just like, it, it's so wonderful. Mm. And like, she gets all of these characters that are just like learning, and we're so happy when they reach milestones or yeah. they make it or something like that, which is weird because she is a licensed teacher. She would probably be more of the mentor to these people than the like mentee <laughs> yeah she otherwise but, let's see she is uh, she voices luna in sailor moon crystal um she voices tails yeah she is tails <laughs> japanese voice <actor. laughs> Perfect. Uh, um, even in the movies uh, yep and um minoru in oh i hear academia <laughs> mm. <laughs> and then the other obvious thing is a uh, reki who is oh, yeah. the who is like my favorite character in all of anime. Yep. And uh, Yunko Noda, who sh doesn't have a, like, v she has a vast career. It's not, like, of major roles. Yeah. Uh, but she does show up in a lot of the, some of my favorite stuff. I Not as anybody, not as, like, the, oh, that's my favorite character of all mm -hmm. time. But let's. Yeah. But, I mean, she doesn't get a role like this often like she she is in emma victorian romance one of my favorites as kelly stoner the young version so it's <laughs> like she's one of the main story characters but it's in a flashback <laughs> and yeah and that that's the kind of roles <sighs> she she that are on like she <sighs> was in event three the first three ava movies but it doesn't give a list of her roles, so she was probably additional voices. Yeah, which is fair. That's that that is kind of yeah. The except for Last Exile, where she played uh, Dio, hmm. uh, who is the uh, the rich the boy from the uh, enemy guild 
who eventually comes to like the surface dwellers and wants to live with them and then has a major role in the sequel, even though he should have died, but that's yeah. another story, but, but that, that, that's probably the other thing she would yeah. be known for. And, but, um, and in Japanese as, because bizarrely everything seems to be leading to Digimon at the moment, this episode, uh, she voices Vmon in Digimon Adventure 2. The, the, okay. That's, that's her other famous role. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I will always watch the Japanese dub version yeah. of this just because um, mm. I I'm, I have to be polite here. Uh, I don't think the English dub is bad. No. It's just that there was one character who was not played particularly well, and that just happens to be the person who played Reki. Yeah. And I have, I'm not going to have any rage. I hope they are having a wonderful life, and I hope they, you know have much happiness i just like and i understand how english dubs work that you just kind of audition for things and you ru you get rushed into this thing where you may mm. not understand quite what you're doing and everything's in a hurry everything's on a budget and um there are people inside the business who know how this works and can make stuff work i yeah. don't think she quite did that and there yeah there are a lot of good performances in the yeah. dub like yeah uh, you know, Wendy Lee of all people shows up for a five minute role and you know I don't know if this was a favor to anyone but uh, it's just like surprise Wendy Lee is Kuomori yeah. we'll explain later um, but there's uh, Carrie Savage plays Raka and she is a extremely good performer mm, and yeah. she, I don't say this because we she was like <laughs> it, interacting with the community for a few months like mm. she is uh, there, there's community, like we still do a bulletin board, uh, message board called old home. And that's where all of us, we don't post a lot, but there, we do fade in and out of the community because it's, it's a bulletin board. It's a lot harder to work yeah. with than a discord or, yeah. but, uh, remember it, those it, kids? It, <laughs> yeah. Remember those kids, <laughs> but, uh, it fits because of how, you know, mm. kind of old the everything it's everything is rustic in hibernate renme mm. everything is just feels like secondhand or built off everything so um it fits that our community is in a bulletin board yeah yeah <laughs> um, um i was quite surprised that this is this is just generally because i wandered around the fandom a little bit in sort of getting to know this series and uh considering this is a series that came out in 1990 Sorry, 2002, uh, and uh, yeah. hasn't had a DVD release as far as I could see. Oh, for... it had a DVD release. Oh, no, but it hasn't had a DVD release in, you know, the Western-speaking world since 2010. Uh, okay, uh, um, uh, they just did a Blu-ray release. Oh, did they? Okay, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Funimation just did that this year, um, probably because it's the 20th anniversary. Yeah, that hey, makes anniversaries, sense. we're doing the... Oh, God, not again. <laughs> Yeah, and all, well, also what they did was um, Yoshitoshi Abe also had a gallery mm. uh, for Hibane Renmei oh, man. and his other work, but it was centered on Hibane Renmei, and that happened in about twenty twenty one while at the tail end of COVID. So I couldn't like dump all of my savings no. and go to Japan and see it. <laughs> Much that as it was, would have been a very bad idea. <laughs> but um, they did a a re full remaster mm. and full new version yeah. of the Blu-ray uh, for of all the materials for Hibane Renme. So Funimation just took that and released it. Yeah. Um, which it needed. Um, in some of the interviews when Yoshitoshi Abe, this is probably his most hands-on anime he has been involved mm. with because he wrote the script and um, he was involved in production. He did go to some of the uh, voice actor auditions and some of the recording sessions, uh, but he didn't do a whole lot of that. He kind of left it to the people who know how to do anime. But mm. um, in the booth, they this was 2002 was when they were slowly switching from high definition from the regular TVs. Mm. Uh, everybody had high definition workstations. Uh, people had normal televisions. So he what during the color coordination. 
they had to make it extremely bright on their monitors mm. at, so it would translate to normal television. Um, hope maybe somebody who has the blue the original Blu-ray release of Hyphen A Ren May in Japan can tell me this. But um, from what I understand, the contrast was way too bright and there were problems with the initial Blu-ray mm. release, which is why it never came over here. Yeah. Um, so that we had the initial DVD release by Genion and slash Pioneer. Um, and then we had uh, what Genion went belly up and oh. Funimation and, you know, everybody else like, raided their corpse and so they then they did a re-release and now 2022 yeah came along 2021 and now we have the blu-ray which is essentially the dvd release but um they didn't do anything to spark it up or anything yeah. um they they put a massive spoiler on the the plot description in the back but oh, that's, um, that's another thing as you do but um yeah um it no, it wasn't a big deal. Um, there was anime news networks like podcast when they talked to like the uh, numbers person at, at Genion about, well, how, <laughs> how much of a success were these series? And people were shocked at how, how low the number having a Ren may would have broken even if Genion was allowed to continue. So <laughs> it was a middling success. Mm. <laughs> um, Not bad considering company collapsing at present point sort of success. Yeah. 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 So, fair enough. Um, the, the only thing I will say about the DVD release uh, for Funimation is that there's something, there's a little thing missing from the beginning that was in the Genion release and it bothers me. So, uh, so all the, the, half of the hibernate live at this place called old home which is an old dormitory mm. and they have little name things and this it's to tell you if they're out or they're in if you're coming to yeah. visit them and you know they flip it and it's red if it's red they're out and um on the genion dvd the first episode it writes out all of their names and it has it translated the uh, Funimation DVD does not, and I'm wondering if that's yeah. because they rushed t to do it, or, but um, they show up later. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if that was an intentional choice, but um, the original translation is still there. So mm. I, it might have just been a technical hiccup that nobody caught, yeah. and they just rushed it out to th the door. But uh, I, I feel like I am talking too much about the background and random right. trivia and all of this. <laughs> Cool. And we Joe, should what? talk about. <laughs> yes, Joe. What is this because series about? I, I have a lot of. I have a. It's my favorite series. I have a lot of knowledge on it. So but yeah. Um. So, the Hibernate, they're angel-like beings. They they eventually get a halo, but it it doesn't like grow out of them. They are gifted it from mm. this little mold that makes like made from these little these gold leaves that we'll find out later. But uh, and then it just hangs over their head. Uh, unfortunately with Rakas, uh, it gives her static cling and her <laughs> hair is extremely a mess because it, it, her hair just sticks to it. And I don't know if this is, it's probably a foreshadowing, but when she first gets her halo, it falls off. So, uh, I don't know if that tells you there's going to be a, a problem with her later or there's some, there's something wrong, but, uh, it initially falls out and she needs a holder. <laughs> and that it's one of the great gifts of this series that there are a lot of little details like this, like how people get, how Hibane get into their outfits and how, how, if it doesn't stick, what do they do? They put where they put a holder of paper and like wire where they, they attach the wire to the halo until it sticks. <laughs> and then it, <laughs> then it causes static cling because, uh, um, one of the Hibane there, Hikari, works at a bakery, and she wanted to try the Halo mold as a mold for bread, and that might have been what caused the static cling because mm. it was used for bread before. <laughs> and, and, she, just and she's got the, these. Yeah, the, the the wire coat hanger just sort of keeping it in place is just the most. <laughs> it's fucking adorable, yeah. Joe. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is fucking adorable, and it and it they just keep throwing little details mm. 
like that. Um, like uh, when they go to the village and uh, Raka just has her like little robe that she was born in. Mm. Um, and she is kind of like, well, she, she knows all of, all of the people are looking at her because the rest of the people in the village are human and mm. the hibernate are special and everybody looks at him. And then it's like, well, and then she gets explained to her. She's special, but then she knows like, then she looks at her clothes and then mm. Reki notices, or I can't, I forget who knows, but somebody notices she is self-consciously looking at her clothes all the time. It's like, well, let's go to the secondhand store. And mm. so that's when, we get introduced to how the Hibernate live. They live off of the secondhand stuff of others, that stuff that yeah. people do not need anymore. So they go to a thrift store where she gets her um, outfit, which is a, you know, kind of mm. a school uniform. It, it's kind of the school uniform sailor outfit for Japan. Yeah. Except it's orange. Um, like, uh, like Abe says, uh, the main color of this series is green, sometimes blue, mm. or he tries to keep a ma main color so his compositions hold together, but he made it or outfit orange so it stands out and uh, so stands out as the main character of the series. So, you know, he does all it's the series is also done with a lot of artist eye and attention to detail because this is Abe working with a lot of things and I, you can tell uh, Radix is not a particularly well-known uh, anime co company, and you could call this the Radix anime if you would yeah, like. Yeah, without much but, trouble. With, yeah, but uh, so they have a limited budget. They don't. There, there are a lot of middle shots where, especially in the Blu-ray, where they take out all of the eye color and they're just little beads. Um, mm. And they're, but. They do hit, they have wonderful design and they make, you know, make sure they have lush backgrounds and, you know, some movement and they make sure it looks good compositionally yeah. and they, they make sure the key animation is put in the right places. So that is what leaves an impression and not all of these little shots like that. Uh, especially in the original DVD release, you can tell this was early digit paint done on a budget mm. because especially the pans across scenery that is clearly just a uh, a drawing. Mm. Um, there, the digital pans are just make it look fairly obvious what you were looking at. But um, the DVD cleans it up. You can still kind of tell, but there is a lot of little work done to make things stick out and to make things work and to ma not notice the strings as it were mm. like there there's clearly a like there's one where they're going through the woods and one of the things is there's clearly a drawing of the well at the other end and with a bird and the bird doesn't move nothing moves but they have like little digital leaves and once you move them out of the way and then they you know they do shaky cam on the drawing itself that uh, all of that makes it convincing that you are watching animation, even if they are, it is, they are doing tricks to fool you that all of this is, isn't anything but like something they're doing on severe budget cuts. Yeah. I mean, it is, and, that is one of the old tricks sort of, you know, um, I mean, hell they did it in Akira where there's like shots where you just have, you know, sound and, Hand scan mm -hmm. and you know the 1997 berserk uses that too and it, 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 mm -hmm. if it works you know it works obviously you know i yeah. i appreciate this is very much a you know a passion project for somebody and it might well be you know well we'll we'll put our obviously animation team to work on it but don't expect you know mm -hmm. you know production ig stuff for this but yeah i mean people clearly cared about mm. it and they wanted it to look good and yeah, you know it. It shows that they put the extra effort, even if in the points they were mm -hmm. extremely rushed. Um, there's more rushed stuff mm. in like that you cannot see from uh, before the remaster. Yeah. Um, 
they 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 did work to clean it up which i i very much appreciate i there is one part that people make fun of um so uh raka is getting a ride from kana one of the the hibernate at old home who works at the clock tower um and she's very mechanical and we'll get into that in a little bit but uh they're they're riding a bike to work in a hurry and like there's a medium shot where they didn't even try to make the faces look the slightest bit on model or you know uh, or not immediately stick out and that is thankfully the only thing i saw in the remaster that was they couldn't do anything with but um yeah some people on tumblr have made like memes out of it um like it it is also a very tumblr anime it, it is a a cult following um you know it has a small but dedicated following who will follow it forever um mm. so uh okay so i to talk probably should talk about the story more it's like raka is now a hibernate she has no memory of her previous life mm. um she has to find a job and she has to find uh and you know she also kind of has to find her place in in this town where she doesn't feel like she should be here and she tries out the other pe uh hibernate in an old homes job so, uh, let's see, we have, uh, Nemu, who is a librarian, and, um, another note, all of the Hyvene are named after their dreams. Um, so, Raka had a dream of falling from the sky, so her name is Raka for falling. And then we have Nemu, who is, whose name means sleeping, because she was asleep in her dream. But, uh, she is a librarian. Um, Kana Riverfish, um, because she... She was probably swimming in her dream or something like that. Uh, she works at the clock tower. Hikari, she had bright light um, in her dream. Um, she is a baker. Yep. Uh, Reki, whose name means small stones, doesn't have a very good memory. She was just walking on a stone-laden path at night. Uh, keep this in mind for later. We'll get that. We'll go um, back to that. <laughs> and then there's Ku, which is air because she was flying through the air um and she is was one of the younger uh hibernate who became one of the elder ones hmm. yeah so um so she is trying out various jobs um and trying to see where she fits in this world and that and then she wonders where what are the hibernate? What what is the wall? And you know all those things where, you know, in it in a different story you would have clear cut, clean answers, and you would have, and there would be, you know, the whole narrative is built around the secret. That is not what it's built around, which is why it comes off as slow or, or, ex extremely tedious for some people yeah it's got that uh, sort of that... slice of life vibe that is sort of yeah very much sort of you know it's 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 slow it's very sweet it's sort of very you know charming but there is at the same time this sort of mystery of exactly what's going on in the background sort of going you know being laced mm. through those sort of first five or six episodes yeah and it's especially noticeable on like your second or third mm. viewing because that they are clearly laying the ground that there is something underneath this um you don't know mm. what um and it it turns out far more personal than what is expected um yeah because it is it is like one of the few anime where you can people watch mm. like um a lot of your interpretations and stuff will be going to observing people and how and mostly the hibernate and how they react to each other and how they're because it's a lot of the hibernate are it's like what their purpose is who they mm. really are and what's secretly going on underneath them and that's especially true for Reki 
and th there are a lot of inner workings that you can see mm. on just either how they interact with each other or how how they react to when certain things are going on that you can make your own interpretation on like Abe wants you to yeah um, so like they they don't tell you I eh, I'll say that for the spoiler section yeah. but th there's a lot of stuff that about their real names and stuff like that where people do a lot of theorizing mm. and, and a lot of it ha you kind of have to know Japanese if you want to go deep deep into it yeah but it also okay, it also but... does this really good thing of sort of setting up the setting of this place this you know obviously mm. of of here so you know by the end of the second episode there is this entirely different bunch of people from outside the town called the toga who come and go who sort mm. of have the the sort of same vibe at... i don't know if you played joe um near the near the original near yeah they have the same yes. vibe as the desert, the desert people who obviously speak in a completely different language, and there is almost this, this language yeah. barrier. Um, the, the ones where you come into the village yeah. and when you try to talk to them, they're like, nobody's home, go away. Yeah, but also the de the ones in the desert with the masks also have that similar sort of vibe, mm -hmm. and it's sort of like, okay, there is this world outside the wall, as a, as we said earlier, the series never quite reveals what's going on. With this world, whether there's, you know, because mm -hmm. there is the suggestion that uh, not only the 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 hand bear, the high bear, but also the the humans who live here are also not allowed to go outside the thing. So you have, you know, mm -hmm. the not the knowledge brought in by the toga, and you know, the cat, this figure of the communicator, who sort of, you know, is very peculiar and they're sort of, you know. And you know, and by the end, yeah. by you know, episode five, there's a sense of okay, there isn't much knowledge of the world outside either, you know, and I, and it's sort of you know, you, yeah. in another in another animator or another writer's hand, you could go, you know, something interest, you could go in a completely different direction with this setting and go, okay, mm. well, what is outside that wall? Yeah. And it should be noted, the Toga are not allowed to talk to the High mm. Bay. Only the communicator of the Toga is allowed to. Mm. But yeah. um, they, they're, it first starts off like they have a this creepy, unsettling vibe. Mm. But it, it, I, I don't, it doesn't explain it, but mm. it eventually kind of like wards it off that they, they are people who are mm. very protective of the, the High Bene, and they very much want them to succeed. It's just that in the rules that they have, they cannot mm. like as blatantly help them as I think even they would like. But um, there, um, the weirdest thing for me is like, if, if you take the interpretation as a purgatory or something, it's that mm. the people still exist there, still exist as people. Like mm. um, uh, Nemu's friend at the library, Sumika is very pregnant and has a kid during the series. Yeah. Um, so, like, there is this normal activity going on, but there's also the Hibane, which very much feels like it's an afterlife. And there's, there's mm. no clear explanation of what it is. And even when some of the characters ask, what are the Hibane, um, they don't, answer it um but um the way the whole series is structured and set up which is really weird that it has it was made as a stream of consciousness and yet it has so much structure um it the first half of the series is about meeting every character and learning about what their version of the world is what their interpretation of the world is and to uh nemu literally because when she goes to the library, she finds out she's making a gift for Sumika. And that is writing a n book about what the origin of the world is. Because there is a badly wrecked um, book about that where they could only read the first few pages. And she, and oh. what Nemu does is she finishes the story with Raka's help that is an interpretation of the world through mm. her light like she makes that that 
uh, God made the Hibane, but found them a failure, so he crossed them off. And then he went to sleep after creating people. Mm. And uh, the Hibane escaped out of his head and went to the and went to this, you know, higher world where the town of Glee is, where they've been ever since. And it is it is literally a, a character detail of Nemu that she falls asleep a lot. So that is a kind of on the nose mm. representation that all of this is the interpretation of the world through the characters, which invites you to make your interpretation yeah. of the world <laughs> through how you see it. And that that is one of the many special things about this series that I, um, yeah. And it should be noted uh, as far as influences, uh, Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World is yeah, the Murakami book is Abe's favorite book, and he's read it at least ten times. And it does take some of the the Haruki uh, Murakami book, yep, inspiration for, as far as the setting. Yeah. Uh, like there's the second half of that book is uh, this person living in this mm. quiet village, um, which you eventually find out later is not a quiet village at all. But but um, that's spoilers for an entirely different thing. But mm. it has nothing to do with this from a thematic or yeah. social st or uh, standpoint. It, it's <laughs> just partially inspiration for the setting. And it, it is a thing Abe mm. liked. So that no. that is it. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I could definitely see. I could definitely see the the influence. You know, because as somebody um, who absolutely loves, I, I feel Murakami's like I'm dominating this stuff. because I I have all the information. You know, it, you could usually see, you dominate could the other uh, things because you have the information. This is our roles are reversed <laughs> now, but we're, um, uh. I want you to talk Joe, about it's this your series favorite and series. how you felt and yeah. how you interpreted yeah. things. Just because I, <laughs> oh my gosh, you are the person who watched it brand new, and it's I, I do all of these all of these conversations about you know how uh, its interpretation. I'm not letting you talk and say your interpretation. So go go. <laughs> boy, ah, uh, this is. <laughs> My interpretation of this series, before we get into true spoilers, um... I think this is a series about loss, and it sort of very much is a series about, you know, learning to deal with loss, learning to deal with, you know, mortality. You know, even if we regard this as sort of some, you know, purgatorial state between life and death, you know... I And this is going to sound really that. weird. This gave me, particularly in the first half, a real Angel Beats vibe, because it does, because it does very much in the same way as Angel Angel Beats very much is a you know it is writ it is part part of the film the, the the series that basically this is a a a middle ground between alive and dead. These are people who have been alive who are you know stopped from moving on. And I would argue that Haibane Ramme is 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 very much the same topic, but from taken from a very different way. It is very much a, you know, being forgiven by you know those who, you know, you knew in a previous life, and obviously you know you know seeking acceptance, and then you know obviously we have this whole you know sense of sense of, of moving on you know to choose something more you know that all that you know negative thoughts or sin holds you down and keeps you in in purgatory mm -hmm. which i know might be being a very you know sort of you know a, a very westernized and certainly a very you know western catholic sort of view upon this but it has it you know it, it has that sense mm -hmm. of being you know this is a series about dealing with you know your your own mortality You know, even if it is, you know, meant as pure allegory rather than actually, you know, this is genuinely what the series is about. I, I feel you've got mm. to sort of, you know, even okay. I I implicitly, and I think you've got to sort of cons cons consider a reading of the series okay. through that perspective. Sport. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm good. I'm good um, on there. I, I think we need to so, get on to. Uh, you know, for the first half, it's <laughs> talking it's about pl- very what pleasant. This if, series you know, is actually about series, and then <laughs> we get to Ku, who one day I I mean they've been they build it up, but um, Ku is being very strange. He is going around like oh she she uh, like Ku gets mistaken for a boy. Uh, yeah. Because Ku has a very boyish little blonde haircut, but she. Yeah. Hibernate. Yeah. Yeah. I should point out at this point there are also male yeah. um, anime. There are Hibernate, yeah. There are male Han, but we yeah. only tend the, to. I mean, there's only one really earlier, major one male. Because, um, uh, person Rocky of that group, and they're only introduced in about two thirds of the way. guy named Kyoko, who is riding a skateboard, which is yeah. interesting. Um, there are. There are a lot of modern inventions in here, but it, it is very turn of the century. Mm. And it is, uh, I don't know if there was what you would call it. It's not like steampunk, mm. but it's just like, there's like mm. some 20th century punk where even though they have like, there there's a lot of modern inventions, it still tends to go towards mm. the early 20th century. Um, I think the other series similar to that is yeah. Ryotaro Nakamura's, uh, Kino's journey, where even if it's dealing with things in futuristic technology, mm. people still dress like it's the early 20th century, and the community still look like it to, for the most part. Mm. Um, so, yeah, yep, very much so. Yeah. Uh, I, we are going to talk about Riotaro. I mean, no doubt first. we'll talk about that at some point because but that's also a new favorite. At the so we have time. Hyoko who. <laughs> They come from the factory. The other people are the factory who are much <laughs> obviously rougher. They are much more like punk, I want to say, or they try mm. to be punk. One of, one of my favorite designs is like these Hibane are trying to dress and act cool mm. in this turn of century stuff where, yes, they have hoodies. Yes, they have ball caps. But um, then especially in the design of Midori, one of the supporting characters, um, it's like she is wearing like early 20th century stuff and trying to make it like cool and mm. it's not working at all. And I, either and that and her friends and it's it, it's a neat design touch. And uh, like I especially like the she has two other uh, friends who are girls who are like um, that remind me of Alice's mm. friends from uh, Serial Experiments Lane who like are given way better te- uh, character designs than they have <laughs> roles in the show, but it's it's like people trying to be cool yeah. in like a, a 90s, early 2000s sense, but they they don't have the clothing to do it, and that is them trying and that, that, like I said it's a neat touch, but um, so Reki knew these people back when she was a lot younger, and you, we find out a whole lot more, but she is now banned from yeah. seeing them for a reason she doesn't talk about and but um so but in old home it is all women except for uh the children there are some children who are boys and a lot of the boys come from the factory that they have to raise because the factory is ill-equipped to raise um raise them so um and in a very interesting way, this passes mm. the Bechdel test or whatever test you have for that, because it, the main character are, you know, f- five women, and they yep. only <laughs> rarely talk about. Uh, okay, I, my my mind just said six women, six women, Joseph, but they don't talk about having a boyfriend. They only talk about. There's only one conversation where they talk so about. Do they ever talk about boys? Oh yeah, having bo- more boys would be nice, so, but not those so boys from the factory though. They're messes, mess of people. <laughs> so, so that's the one conversation they have about you know boys as far as like dating. But they they just exist. The main characters are six women who just <laughs> exist yeah. in this so, world, and it's it's so um, yeah. But. Mm. Anyway, so we go back to Ku, who is building up to, yep. who has just been acting very strange and very mature, and um, mm. then we go go back to 
yeah, talk, giving away stuff. And then it's like Rock has a conversation with Hakari. Well, uh, yeah, started to give away stuff was, as well. Which she is... didn't know who she was, so she kept taking things from others, trying to find her identity. Like, she borrows Hikari's glasses and falls down the stairs because she can't see right. She crashes uh, Reki's uh, scooter, uh, which, and hmm. she does all of these things to be like, and then she eventually learns to be herself. And she, she gets a very clear hmm. identity. And once she did, she does that, um, she has this conversation with Reki about hmm. how uh, my life is this cup of water and everything adds a little a few drips to it and it's now full and she tells Raka you gave me some of those drops thank you and then that night there's a storm and Ku never comes back and Reki sees this light in the western woods which uh, is a, ma a maze that they're not supposed to go into because it's close to the wall and touching the wall damages them um, so so but uh, they see the light, and then, mm. then, once she tells them she sees the light, Reki just has a panic, yeah. and then everybody plans to go out to the woods to to see what happened, because the Hibane have a day of flight, where they essentially have fulfilled their purpose or whatever you would interpret mm. it as, and they they have become so that's when they leave. And that was Ku's day of flight. Um, so mm -hmm. Ku essentially leaves. And um, most of the other ones yeah. accept this, but because it was so ex unexpected, Raka becomes very depressed and very sad. And uh, she has depression that lasts out to weeks. And what happens to her is her wings start to turn black. And this is where it very clearly is about other things like, you know, depression yeah. and grief. And, uh, what we find out is cutting because, uh, Raka starts yeah. cutting her wings to hide the black and, you know, it starts being yep. noticed and, and, that is ve very clearly supposed to reference mm. like cutting in real life. That is, yeah. So uh, the self harm and eventually, Reki discovers what she's doing because yeah, Reki herself I mean, was born with all general. black it wings, is. and she mm. she is seen as like a. There is a extremely good flashback where uh, she is born. Nobody mm. find. Uh, nobody finds her cocoon until she is hatched out and she already has her wings and she has just been just there in the cold winter for who knows how long until like Nemu hears the racket and sees mm -hmm. and then runs to Kuomori. Kuomori is the person who ran Old Home before uh, Reki took over. So, um... So Reki is born with black wings and there's nobody there. And uh, mm. she is seen as a curse from the villagers. All of them look around her and Kuomori is trying to help her. But um, it's then Reki starts cutting her wings because they're black wings. And and Kuomori starts by slapping her and then it just just holds her. It's one of the like... Mm -hmm. It's like Ko Otani is like, I'm about to cry here, but it's like Ko Otani like has a really sad, really good music cue here mm. that just drops and, um, and then just like Kuomori accepts her and then like fights yeah. for her and eventually they learn there's this medication that can hide her wing colors and that's how she exists and that's how she helps, uh, Reki exist, but. Uh, eventually Kuomori has her day of flight, which affects Reki far deeper than, than let on. Um, like she and Rek she and Nemu were best, our best friends, but, uh, they yeah. don't start or in the middle. They don't, they aren't mm. best friends somewhere in the middle, but they, they eventually, 
Like, Nemu is frightened of her and does not like uh, Reki because of her black wings and she's strange. And uh, Nemu at this point is a child who, you know, has no tact, has no anything, just knows that Kuomori is important to her and Kuomori has weak health. Uh, so to gather the things she needed to make the stuff, uh, Kuomori hurts her stuff that covers her wing color. Kuomori like passes out because she gets too weak in the middle of the road. And um, Nemo just tells Reki straight up, if she dies, it's your fault. So, and eventually they make, they help make dinner for Kuomori and they, they get forgiven because it's like kids have short memories, but then Kuomori goes away and Reki and Nemu have a fallout again and then we'll get to that point but so there's this all this past with Reki and she tries to help Raka who is still very much depressed and still very detached from everybody else and eventually and it's just this feeling that she doesn't fit in this world everybody fits in this world but I don't I don't have this job I don't have um, yeah, and it is this. very much a, a series. I mean, I did wonder, this is, this is perhaps me reading too much into it, that there's a, little, you know, there's a little bit more than friendship between certain characters in this. I don't know if that's... Um, yeah. Um, you can go that way. Like, you can... Uh, certainly with Nemu and Reki, or, and then Reki and Raka, they... they but um, the the thing is, I don't get like a sexual vibe off this series. Uh, there, mm. that is not what this mm. show is about. I mean, certainly you can go that way, and people have. I I have seen the fan art, and they're no, uh, even no. though if it's the least um, porn friendly, let's say, <laughs> series I have ever seen. But there, people have tried, and they have done it. So, uh, but I never thought of it in that way. I, if certainly if you want to interpret it and if you see these relationships as, you know, more intimate, like not that way, but like, yeah, as the, as lovers, you can absolutely do that. Um, but, uh, it is, you know, the grief of losing yeah, somebody that then, close to you and Hyoko definitely has a thing for Reki. That yeah. he is and, and in like, love, I, even I, if I he is so, a yeah. a punk kid who cannot mm. express his love mm. at all. But um, yeah. and Midori, uh, Hyoko's best friend, certainly has a crush on Hyoko and is very annoyed at Reki because clearly Hyoko mm. has a thing for Reki, and she. Mm. But um, yeah. Because Reki they, used to be part of their group. Part, part of their used group. To be, used to be a bad, a bad, a she bad She used to be person. a bad girl. Who, and <laughs> they proved that by dressing her in, like, French New Wave striped outfits. <laughs> oh, no, not stripes. No, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, I, I like the, this band of people that get together. Like, mm. their, their idea of rebellious is 60s New Wave French films or something like that. <laughs> um, it... it Shows up again in random places, but, um, yeah, but so after Kuomori left, uh, Reki gets in with the, the bad group, the, the punk kids at, uh, the, and then Let's watch French new wave films. Yeah. <laughs> and then Hy Hyoko and Reki eventually try to get over the wall. Cause she just wants to find out what happened to Kuomori or go to Kuomori, even though she, and can't accept that she's gone and they not only does Hyoko touch the wall and extremely hurt himself but he drives a wedge into the wall which is super illegal which is so uh, Hyoko nearly dies trying to take yep. uh, Reki and she, um, they explain this more in the uh, the extra doujinshi but uh, his head was bleeding and it's because one of the pitons fell out and 
and hit his head at a high speed, which caused the Ooh. cut. So yeah. Uh, so he is bleeding, and they do this in a very simple but effective way because there, there is like two or three frames of rain animation in this shot, and it is is done very basic, and it, it's very it's still painting with just effects placed over it. But because Hyoko yeah. has the blood trailing down in the middle of the frame, it really works. It it's a striking. Uh, image of how of that. So, um, mm. so there's what's go what's what's secretly going on with Reki on Raka's side. Uh, she eventually gets called to gets a dream where she remembers her entire dream, uh, where she falls from the town and she falls into the well, this well in the middle of the woods. So she goes out and finds this well mm -hmm. and tries to go down it. Uh, but since there used to be wa water on it, all the uh, handles uh, broke off, uh, rusted out and one of them breaks off and she falls into the well and injures her leg. Mm -hmm. Where um, they discover a crow, a dead crow. And uh, crows have been... Symbolic part of throughout. the yeah. part of the background, and uh, it's one of Abe's things because a crow was in the opening to Serial Experiments Lane, so yep. it's a common thing. But in this, it serves. It seems to imply there are more, and then, then that's when she realizes a piece of her past life through a feeling, um, hmm. where she had this friend, and their their friend tried to help them, and. You know, either she, R Raka hurt their friend, or something happened that caused her friend to get hurt, and uh, the feeling she is getting is that the crow is her friend, letting her know. Uh, she just, her, she's forgiven, and her, her, you know, it's finished, and the the crow shows its dead body, or at least. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of <laughs> interpretations that this gets into very much interpretation t territory for what. And then she falls asleep in the well and she has the dream that I imagine what was happening before she died or before or whatever this happened that caused this thing. Um, mm -hmm. It is only in. You don't see anything. You see a little pinhole of water and you hear a stream rushing by and then you hear a door opening once and then you hear something else, a very wide door opening. And uh, unfortunately for me, I can't interpret sound into visuals very much. There are a lot of people who are better who have this entire vision of what happened. What I am thinking is in my interpretation is Raka fell into a river mm. and her friend tried to save her and her friend got um, ex extremely hurt or extremely cold or extremely something that her friend got very, mm. and you know, her, uh, and, um, this goes into another thing. If all the Hibernate are suicides, that's that's one of the interpretations mm, and yeah, I, one of the big things. Um, I do not believe this. Um, I personally don't. There are people who do. Um, one of the people who do uh, committed suicide later on in life um, that I know. Uh, but uh, that might just be how they view things. And mm. Uh, if you view them as all suicides, that might be a thing in your brain you want to yeah, explore these, or talk to a yeah. therapist about. Um, Please. <laughs> from, from what I... Because <laughs> the people who see all the hibernate as suicides tend to be more troubled, and that might mm. just be their interpretation. But what I see is incomplete people or because of situations or because of uh, something they've done that have led them to be incomplete emotionally or personally. Um, yeah. 
like who did not have an identity because she died so young um so she was she was imitating everybody until she had an identity she was comfortable with and you know that she yeah she liked herself um, and then she moved on yeah and she moved on um I, there's a lot of things you can interpret with Raka's, um, that she, especially with what, where the story goes next, that she had this friend and that she kept thinking she felt this hurt, this friend. <laughs> and, um, that she, that's where, why she didn't feel she belonged or she had anything because, because there was no, nothing else for her. Um, some people say she jumped off the bridge or some people say she fell. My interpretation is she fell off the bridge. Her friend tried to save her and uh, she didn't. Raka didn't make it, but her friend did. And the, the vision is her friend is uh, looking at her as she dies. Um, that is my interpretation of yeah. what all of this is. And she, because of her friend probably got hurt or something like that. Um, she probably thinks she, she, her of herself as a burden and that she hurt her friend and um, her friend came as a crow to tell her that is not the case. That is what I interpret this, this yeah, all as. So, but, interpretation. Yeah. So when she wakes up uh, all, after all of this, her Mm -hmm. wings aren't black anymore and she, she has gotten through what she has managed to get through and uh, but unfortunately uh, she still has to get out of the well which the toga come along and since they can't talk to her it's a very like they have to think really hard about how to help her up and out of the well and they do they they kind of bring one guy down with the bucket. I I don't know if they had to wait for that or not, but, you know. And she, she gets on their shoulders, and they walk yeah. up. And, um, but then when she gets out of it, she's like, do you know what happened to Koo? I, I want to know what happened to Koo and, you know, all that stuff. And they just have to walk away. They can't talk to a person like... Mm. And then eventually since the woods are close to the wall, she goes to the wall and the wall is bad. The, the wall is bad. If you touch it, the wall is absolute. It doesn't matter if you are good or bad. And she, because she hears a voice that sounds like coo in the wall and she touches it. And, um, and then she, she becomes eventually the rest of the people find her, but then she becomes ill with a fever. Hmm. But, um, then the it's kind of hard to explain the rest of the series because yeah. then we then we flipped the switch on this is this was not about Raka this whole time this was about Reki and about yeah that's where the series went I genuinely assumed and I I, I don't mm. tend to go and you know read the synopsis before I watch a series so I can go into it you know but I assumed that it would be you know. But he and and then you know Raka you know basically works out what her dream means and you know finds her happiness and you know has her day of flight. Nope. <laughs> no. Um, nope. <laughs> it turns out you know obviously Reki was insanely depressed this whole time and was thinking. I mean, not so much thinking about ending herself, but like when. She knows her day of flight is soon and is just thinking about vanishing instead of mm. taking the day of flight. And essentially, Raka is her last chance. Mm. And uh, I'm, I'm going to get, like, worked up and I might, like, cry at this part because this is, like, mm -hmm. the, the last episode of Hibane Renmate. The last two episodes, in fact, are real as shit. Um, I cried like, too. Don't worry, Joe. <laughs> okay, I know, I know, but I need to talk about this stuff. So, yeah. but um, so Raka is essentially Reki's last chance to be forgiven or to figure out to 
find her way. And what Reki has been doing this time is essentially imitating Kuomori, her, the person who helped her, in attempts maybe she will be forgiven. Maybe she will be... Um, she will find her answers. Yeah, and be allowed to move what on. she finds out is Raka was forgiven and she still hasn't been, which sends her in this depressive spiral mm. that she doesn't show anybody else, but is very clear. She uh, Throughout this whole series, she has this giant room that is Reki's room uh, that um, once she, they talk about... Uh, she wants to make into a guest room because it's too big for her. So she's planning to move into this room up into the in the corner, and she doesn't explain what she does. She's she's a painter, so mm. she explain. And uh, the only drawing Raka has seen is Kuomori, mm. and and uh, mainly so Kuomori doesn't be, get forgotten, and because Kuomori was the most important piece to her, so, but. Um, mm. What they don't tell you is what is going on in this dark room. What is she painting? Uh, Reki is painting her dream. Yeah, and it's not a nice dream. It, it's not a nice dream, and it's eventually... Well, we'll get to what that... Uh, yeah. They, have, they also have this end-of-the-year ceremony where everybody knows Reki is moving on, and people are trying to make amends for it. And... Um, you know, obviously there's a factory. Midori doesn't want to want to help because obviously she's she's in love with Hyoko and Hyoko is too busy crushing on Reki. But mm. they they eventually agree because Midori was Reki's friend too, and they they eventually have to move on. So they they can't talk to each other, and Reki refuses to come to the village for the end of the year festival to where they can have one last conversation. So, um, they get these fireworks, and, um, another thing is the end of the year, people give these people, these bell nuts, which, ex yeah. thank you, or, you know, I've been stupid, or, or, you know, all these various meanings, and you give to mm -hmm. them to everybody. So, instead of being able to give her a bell nut, um, Kyoko sets off a firework that, a yellow firework that um, stands for I've been stupid or, you know, something like that, to that effect. Um, yeah. And the, the, their own gets sort of that... code between them, yeah. Yeah. And th this is the part that always makes me cry, is that, like, they have to get Reki to pay attention, so uh, Raka and Midori are running back and trying to get her attention, and, which, <laughs> cry calling out her name doesn't help, so... Raka just like slams a brick into a pipe until she, Reki <laughs> sees what the hell is going on. She, then Midori's response is like, "Oh, well done." But so they they get their message. I've been stupid, or or it's like forgive me or so, something to that effect. Yeah, and then, uh, I've been I think it's been I've been stupid in the English subs at least. So yeah, yeah. and then Reki comes down and then. Midori realizes this is it. This is the last time she's ever going to see Reki. And so she just, like, starts bawling and, like, just hugs her. And then they have their last conversation or whatever that is. Mm. So, I mean, that is, like, that gets me to cry every time. Because yeah. it's just, like, it's one of those just real heartfelt things where people get beyond themselves and then just get to how they really feel after getting through just, you know, so much bullshit mm -hmm. people put through. It's like, um, a similar yeah. moment is like the girl who leapt through time. Like at the end of that, when she realizes this is the last time she is going to see this guy and there's her Henri self, which is just like, fine, you're going to go, go away, go. And then the camera holds on her. And then she just starts realizing what she did and what's happening. And she just starts mm. crying. And, yeah, uh, that... know, I'm empathic and that picks up on me and that is like that is like the most real mm. one of the most real moments of somebody just like the barriers people put up just like falling mm. and like as an empath that just like those points just get to me and mm. and 
that's why it's one of my favorite moments. And then it's just like, and then we get to the last episode where it's, it's called Recky's world. What part of it is mm-hmm. called Recky's world. And so we get to talk to the dark side of Recky. Um, who is feels like she has been doomed this whole time. She has never given a chance. It has never been fair. Um, only Kuomori has stepped up to help her. Everybody else has hurt her in some way or another. Yeah. Um, or, simply, or simply moved on. Yeah. And left her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Midori is left. Everybody's left. And you. Everybody's fallen asleep for the night except for Raka, who mm. gets this feeling. And um, uh, one of the little details that I especially picked up on is uh, Reki get. Reki smokes. That's her big character thing. And um, everybody tells her to stop smoking because it's stupid. And uh, she gives her lighter to Raka. And what is important in this, and I, I, Abe would never have known this, but this, this might have been a behavior of a suicidal person. Um, mm. But one of the people I know who killed themselves... Um, their last day before they did it, um, they went up to one of their friends instead who was smoking and said, you need to stop doing these. They'll kill you. And then that night he did that. Mm. So it is a very weird personal connection. And I don't know if other people do it similar. Oh, I don't know. It's, but that is a detail that sticks with me. Um, so she uses the lighter, because the power's out or the lights are off and she finds her way into Reki's room and it is her nightmare. Um, but it is where, nightmare. Where it, yeah, it is very nightmarish. It is a, it is a stone laden road and there is a red moon and what the road is, is train tracks. Yeah. And it is, where she went in her life to how she says it abandoned herself. Yeah. And that I mean that... I mean with with Recky, I we've obviously commented on this before. I we we, we you know, you go back and forth on whether, you know, all of the hand be- uh, the high be- uh, you know so it's like, there is an, an implicitness that perhaps yeah. you know Recky did uh, kill herself. Reki absolutely did. And I think that is what the difference mm. is why they aren't all suicides. I think they just, yeah. they are people who died young before they could find and be mm. okay with themselves. Themse- yeah. yeah. But Reki is an extreme case, obviously, mm. because she was born with black wings and mm. it's like all of this. And, uh, you know, yeah. and the, she was, the series and goes she feels into... like she was never given a mm. chance mm. because even she was born, she didn't have the ceremony. She her wings were out before anybody even yeah. saw her, and which must have been a painful, lonely experience. And then the first person her age rejected her to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. And then she went to, you know, when she ran, the one person who took care of her went away. And yeah. then the people she went with that she could relate to, uh, one of them got seriously hurt in something that doing something for her mm. and Midori threw a rock at her uh, after hurting Kyoko threw rocks at her and, mm. her, and what you find. So everybody yeah. in her life has hurt her. And now she feels Raka has hurt her because yeah, there's an earlier scene where, um, the, the, uh, the main interpreter for this sort of, obviously the toga sort of has a conversation with mm-hmm. Raka and basically goes into this concept called the sort of the circle of sin, which I'm pretty sure is high Christian doctrine. And it's sort of, yeah, you know, they um, go, but you know, you get stuck in, you know, if you, you know, if you can't forgive yourself, then that is in itself is, you yeah. know, and also sinful. You, can, you cannot <laughs> yeah. do it yourself alone. No. You, you need somebody to point out when it is a maze mm. or when you're getting yeah. trapped inside yourself. And, you know, these are very important things. Um, I also have people who are into Eastern religions that say there there are yeah. a lot of 
doctrines in here too. It's mm. it's a mix between the the two. Um, it's just the iconography is far more uh, Christian because yeah. they have the yeah. wings and the halos. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, just, it's like this, it's like people who could you go, okay, but does the Evangelion have Christian? think yeah i suppose so but the, yeah. you know it also lifts from hebrew and eastern mysticism so yeah yeah <laughs> and the gnostic okay. verses which are very oh gosh <laughs> idea of christianity is at times but uh yeah yeah so so, oh, so we, we get to so raka comes in and then just explains all of this how i i was never good i was only doing i was only helping you to be forgiven but then they forgive you and yeah and this is where you were talking to purely the dark side of a person yeah um who's uh, sort of represented by this sort of stone i i have done know, this i have talked to the dark side of one person yeah. or and multiple people it is not it yeah. is never a plan pleasant conversation because they help, hate themselves and they want to go through what they they want to go through with this and they yeah. want to destroy any barricade of doing this even if they know in their heart is wrong and it is extremely hard to stop and it, it is extremely yeah. I mean to put for lack of a better word, it is the most exhausting, mm. terrifying thing you will ever experience in your life. Um, but yeah. so like if Raka tries to help her, but essentially gets rejected. And now that you know, and she says, now that you know what a terrible person, how I don't, didn't really like you get out. And so in this act, it is Reki. Um, Reki pushes her out and it's about ready to come. And Reki has this vision of her like inner child or their part that wants to be helped mm -hmm. or something. Um, you can interpret it however, but they don't explain, but it's like, you didn't have to push her out like that. She only wanted to help her. And um, then after Reki makes, this is my decision. I'm going to vanish here. And then that part of herself like fades into stone and then there's just then R Reki who like no don't go and then just like tries to hug this the stone version of herself as it fades away into mist and then Raka fine oh god damn it what it's okay it goes to personal stuff, so I, I can't yeah. talk about it. I, I don't want to talk about it, but um, she finds uh, Reki's journal, and like the first obvious page is she finds this thing, her wings scratched out and says, I'm sorry, Cold Warrior, I wasn't forgiven. And then she keeps flipping through it, and she finds the beautiful parts. She finds, like, she did love this world. She did she was excited for Raka. She didn't want to love it. And it's... She saw all the side that her dark side was rejecting. And so... Raka makes the excuse to walk back into the room. And help Reki, but... Um, she is stopped by the version of her, like... The side that wants to be helped, that that stops her and it's like Reki needs to ask for this and then this the bit the surrealist version of this train starts coming into the wall and Reki is about to be devoured by it until she says Raka help me and so she asks for help and then the Raka is now allowed to help her and mm. saves her and then you know it Eventually, she realizes, you know, it it gets to interpretation, but she is yeah. she Raka forgives her, so that forgives the sin, and she and Reki now has normal wings, and she can take her day of flight peacefully, and uh, you know, aside from some like you know post stuff, 
that is, yeah. uh, you know, that is the end of the series. They kind of tease for a sequel where they have a <laughs> cocoon with twins, but that, um, yeah. But and there are a lot it's... of li- there are a lot of little yeah. details in the uh, epilogue that are really good. Like, there's the feeling that Nemu is going to be next to have to deal with her issues because Nemu's big thing was she wanted Reki to move on before she did. And she didn't want to leave her alone because uh, obviously Nemu has done some of this and obviously gets some of the guilt because mm. she has pushed away Reki sometime, mm. but did not want to leave Reki by herself and have another friend and be alone. So oh. there, but now Nemu her, herself is alone and it, there's that scene where she's just hanging out by herself where it feels like she, ha- she is the next person to have to deal with her mm. issues. Um, yeah. And um, Reki, it, because everybody forgot Kuomori so easily, her biggest fear was being forgotten. So what they, what Raka does is she takes all of the paintings that Reki made of old home in the area around her and puts it in the surroundings. So hmm. there's a piece of Reki everywhere that people can remember, at least through her work. And, you know, yeah, yeah the, the series ending is, you know, it's... You know, there, there's like the ser- the sequel tease and all that, but all of it is yeah. like very beautiful and it all works out in ways that it's amazing this was a six and a half hour stream of consciousness <laughs> and not... And so coherent literally de- and so... Le- so coherent in what it's doing and why it's doing it. I mean, there's the answers of what's beyond the wall and all of that, but it's it's <laughs> that's not what matters here. And... Um, you know, uh, I've been, you know, bawling my this eyes is out your here. Fa- this is your it's, favorite series. This is my favorite series, series and you know, know, for very obvious reasons. And, it, yeah. and you, you know me, I don't emotionally react to things very much, and I'm mm. very clearly emotionally <laughs> reacting to yeah. on on a this. recording that is going yeah. to be <laughs> sent to a lot of yeah. people. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, obviously I'm gonna this, just yeah, I'm just th- gonna say at this point, obviously, if you are have you know obviously thoughts like Reki's, please get help. We are gonna put links to uh, the relevant agencies at the bottom of this uh, video I, because I, I feel you know when we're going into <laughs> subject matter like this, we have to because yeah, but it is. I, I, I mean, I've had so much loss in my life, and but yeah. it's, uh, I, d- I don't even like just posting suicide stuff because I've held people out of no. suicide. It is no, a rough absolutely. thing. No, no, no. It is a terrible thing, but um, no. it is also, you have, one of the biggest messages is, and it's very basic, it's okay that you're here. It is, yeah. you are okay. And, um, yeah. Raka, it, Raka, even though she has no place to be, even though she learns her place, is it's okay to be here. And Reki uh-huh. eventually found that it's, you know, okay. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's it's very basic, but it's something you have to feel. It's not something you you can just say and it happens and it's just like and help from other people is not yeah. like I I am a person who would be immune to just calling a head a, a line yeah but, yeah and so this is why it kind of this makes you feel that more than you hmm. than somebody just saying these or j- just giving this hotline or that somebody is yeah. there no, this, no, I, pres- no I agree but I I know that I know that's not what you meant. But yeah, I, no, I'm, I'm just trying no, to no, no, I, I, how no, it, it, this, this, and um, hmm. for my personal story, it's not even a big deal. Um, in like uh, 2003, 2004, um, I was going through a lot of shit. It was my senior year of college. I had three writing intensive uh, classes, and my brain only has enough energy for writing, which I fa- found out was like undiagnosed ADHD, where it had. It, everything burned out twice as fast. Um, I had to run our student film organization because there was nobody left who would, and anybody else who took over it would have made it something different because we are, were an independent 
uh, cult mm. film. Um, and why is my phone ringing? Leave me alone. Um, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah. Sorry, my phone was ringing. That is a bad time for the phone <laughs> to ring. Um, but um, I had sleeping disorders because I had so much to do that I could not sleep until five in the morning, and I had a class at eight eight in the morning mm. that I could not wake myself up for. And my best friend had left college, and in fact, all of my friends had left college because they were all a grade above me, and so I was alone dealing with a whole lot of things by myself and that's when this series came along and I can't say I survived everything perfectly um, like I, I had to take a couple D's and a couple courses I had to wake up at 8 a.m. to go to but you know it let me get help and it let me just do enough that I could go forward and I'm still here and I'm not, I didn't fail. I, yeah. so that's, uh, you know, it doesn't even have to be, you you have a big tragic story. It's just, you are not, you, you are on the verge of failing something in your life. So it finds these people and it is just the, been this big community of, you know, varying people, a lot of artists and musicians. Um, but it's been, it's very, a lot of varied people. Like there's been a mall cop. Uh, there, there's, there, there's yeah. just been, it, there's been a whole lot of people and it's been a very supportive community. Obviously it's been, a, it's, it's built on support. Yeah. So it's, and it's, I wouldn't say it's helped me find a place. I, I, feel myself I am I am a ghost who does not belong any to anywhere like I I can talk about sports I can talk about anime I can talk about music mm. I I <laughs> was a former film critic I was former all of these things but I never once felt like I belonged in any of these communities or with any of these people mm. so and this gave me a sense that it's okay it's you yeah. you have your own way and you are you are fine existing as you are. So you are enough. So basically. you are enough. So like that is how it finds people. Mm. And that is why it is a special series to not a lot of people, but you know, they treasure it and it's a very similar. Uh, and yeah. it's, it's just, it is the favorite. That is why it's the favorite. Yeah. Um, and now and you've I've, introduced me to it. Yeah, I, 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 how do you feel about it? I fucking love this. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, uh, probably quite a number of our listeners because you know, I've struggled with some of the stuff in this. this is, you yeah. know, I struggle with depression and I struggle with feeling enough. And uh -huh. this series says a lot of the things that I try to articulate probably as well as I ever I could okay and it's just you know you, but I, you know I, I'm not saying this is gonna be you know a panacea of a series if you have you know depression no, you, you no. know um, with all due like, respect please please see a professional like I don't, said, don't uh, yeah. <laughs> there was somebody in the community yeah. in the anime community mm. who has killed themselves and one of the things they did yeah. was a podcast on this series yeah. Um. And so it it is not a magic mm. thing, but no, it's like, no. it is. But no. But no piece of media. Is, yeah. No. No piece yeah. of media is. But it no. is. But. This is something special. It is something special, and it it is something especially special to the people who need it. Even if mm. you know the people outside of it who don't need it see it just as kind of a mm. series that kind of peters out of it. It's over arcing story which is what they want because you know yeah. they they don't need what it, this has to offer yeah. so um i don't know i feel like i've taken over this conversation i i, I don't know <laughs> the, uh like i get the feeling it's there are a lot of raw points that you don't want to touch no i i yeah you, i 
you've as I said, I'm not joking. You've articulated a lot of the stuff okay. I would have said about this but slightly yeah. more succinctly than than I could. Because and yeah. hopefully more people find it and they make yeah. they put their story onto it. Like um, yeah. uh, one of the biggest things stories from the community is that there is a uh, professional extra uh, who will try to make a movie out of this. Um, like it, they took the wings out and, but, uh, they were professional extra on like, like Star Trek series where you need like aliens and stuff and you need people who can be hang out and make up chairs for mm -hmm. hours and stuff like that. So he, he was in Hollywood. He tried to make a screenplay out of it. And one of the things he picked up on his interpretation is that, uh, Yoshitoshi Abe had a, probably had a close friend who committed suicide, uh, via, walking in front of one of the trains and you yeah. can see this like especially in lane uh one mm. of the first episodes if not the first episode yeah. has like that thing where uh the train crashes because somebody killed themselves and there's like yeah. blood on the wire and then later you like you can hear lane feels their soul as they're in front of the train and mm. like this this shows up multiple times so his thing was that Yoshitoshi Abe definitely had one, either saw somebody commit suicide or one of their best friends. Mm. Um, yeah. Abe in his interview says this is the most personal thing he's ever done, but he made it in a way that it does not approach the personal things that happened to him. So, and he wants no. to leave it ambiguous for the things that for people to make their own story about. And mm. so, so, if that's the truth, we'll probably never know because no. he, he wants to leave this as a piece of art that you put your own stamp on and yeah. all of that. Yeah. <sighs> so, <laughs> I, I, so unless you have anything to add, I, no, I, I, like I, I, don't, said, I don't, don't want to take over, but it sounds no, like I, you, you don't want to touch into the things and that's, okay. I, I mean, I mean, I, I, as I said, we'll eventually, we'll, uh, I, 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 I Okay, <laughs> I I'm bad. I'm here, and that's enough for me. And okay. you know, there are many people, including you, Joe, who who uh, you know have helped me with mm -hmm. the the sort of the 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 the, the, the things that are covered in yeah. the series. Yeah, and uh, it's credit to this series as helping me be able to do it because, mm. I'm, like, like I said, I don't feel like I reach most people on a. Mm on a personal level like we can have i have to ha make interests to find things to talk mm. about with people and stuff like that which is why i know yeah. all of the sports all of the anime i've explained american football to you <laughs> so uh yes so oh, it, it's all of this it's all of this stuff to like yeah but i don't really never feel like i reach people and this this is mm. one of the things that has helped me reach people so yeah. It is an extremely important thing to me. Obviously, it's my favorite show of all yeah, time, and of I, course. I cried in the middle of making this. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so there, that is, and I think we need to move on there to the are. next episode because we are right. at hour and fifty. <laughs> We're on hour and fifty. Oh, this is <coughs> yeah. So um, this is sort of a two-parter thing. Um, number one, we are, as previously mentioned, not talking about the Wu Tang Clan in term in uh, next episode. We are, in fact, talking about British um, goth um, Godfathers, the Sisters of Mercy's second album, Floodlight, Fl uh, Floodlands, which should be very interesting because it was partially produced by Jim Steinman. <laughs> so that will be our next episode. <laughs> Uh, then, anime-wise, it's I believe it's my pick next. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, my next pick is something from this this decade. <laughs> okay. It's 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 laid back camp. We're we're going from um so, sort of something vaguely describable as slice of life to something that is very much definitely um slice of life. <laughs> okay, so. Well, that's Let's it. Um, uh, that is that next episode is going to be a lot less personal. I can tell you that. Yeah, much. absolutely. Um, gonna, I got to go gonna blow be, my nose. It's going to be cute girls doing camping. Uh, we can be found uh, on Twitter at uh, not so final prod and on uh, Patreon at patreon.com. The Tom and Joe show. Thank you once again for joining us. I've been Tom. I've been Joe. Until next episode, we will see you later.
Oh, Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>